more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. Yeah. This is the song of deliverance this morning. Say, no more shackles, no more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. anxiety. We accept freedom over this nation, Father God. We accept your freedom in our lives, Father God. We accept the freedom of being your sons and your daughters. The freedom it brings our souls. The freedom it brings our hearts, Father God. And in heavy times, Father, we thank you for freedom in this place. We thank you that you're the king of all. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I ride, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. And let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins, the echo of my days, oh, he is my song, because you are good, good. You are. 
Sing out it as well. Somebody make that declaration right now over everything they've been through.
declaration. Because yours is the kingdom, yours is the power, yours is the glory forever. Amen. Yours is the kingdom, yours is the power, yours is the glory forever. Amen. He has all Because of that, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well. Father, we just thank you right now that it is well with our soul. That because of you, yours is the kingdom, yours is the glory, and that yours is the power. It is well with our soul because you are on the throne and you are in charge and you take care of everything, God. We put our trust and our faith in you today. Does anybody believe that today? Does anybody declare that? Is anybody well with their soul today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for ruling and reigning over all things. Thank you that it's your kingdom, that it's your power and your glory that matters. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Give him one more hand clap of praise this morning as you are seated. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. Glory to God. Good morning and welcome to Epic Church. And despite my promotion last night at the Clegg reception, I'm the, my wife and I are the executive pastors here at Epic Church, and we want to welcome you. And we just want to celebrate the Cleggs. They're uh, now on their way to their honeymoon. And it was just such a wonderful time to celebrate them last night in their union. And we just expect and declare great things over their lives. And at this time, I would like to invite your attention to our screens for some church news. Good morning, Epic family and guests. Thank you for joining us today. Here is what's happening here at Epic Church. Good morning, Epic Church. Go ahead and pull out your phones and check in on Facebook. You can share with the world what God is doing here and in Lakeland. All church prayer will be Tuesday at 6.30. Come join us as we pray for our church, community, and the world. The second Summer Worship Night's coming up July 23rd at 6.30 p.m. 
Join us once again as we gather for a time of worship and intercession. Epicenter Arts is underway. It's not too late for you to be a part of changing our community one heart at a time. Visit the Epicenter Arts table in the lobby to find out how you can impact this generation. And now, back to the service. Yes, amen, amen. Good morning, Epic Church. Good morning, people of God. You know, freedom is the word for July. I mean, you just can't get around that. Four days into the week, and we're talking about freedom. But I'm talking about today a freedom that God gives, that when he sets you free, you're free indeed. Give my testimony this morning. Years ago, when I got saved, I was, like, real brand new in the Lord, and I had some very influential friends that uh, I would listen to their word because I hadn't really gotten into the Bible that much and didn't really know about it, so I would take their word for it because they were saved at least a year before I was. And I'll never forget, it was about offering, and every time offering time came, in my heart, I just knew it's right to give. So I would, you got to understand, this, 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 it's back 40-something years, all right? So we didn't have the cards so that we could use them later on. We didn't have all that. What you, usually what you had was on you. I didn't have a bank account. It was on me, my, my, my paycheck, everything. So when I went to the offering, I would just go ahead. I mean, I w they would make us wait sometimes 15, 20 minutes because they wanted to tell us why it was good to give. But I was already free, so I knew why it was good to give. So I, was, I would come with my money and throw it on the table. They didn't have receipts and, you, you know, you didn't have tax write-offs or anything like that. Just put my money in there, right? So, so one day, my friend said, hey, Stanley, you, you got to get wise to this. They're going to always ask you for money, but you don't always have to give so much because when we go out after after service, you never have money for coffee and donuts. You say, you got to start. So what they said to me, they said, listen, this is how you do it. You put your, put your tithe and your offering in your right-hand pocket, all right? And then the money that you want, that you need for the rest of the week or whatever, you put it in your left pocket. And don't use your left hand, just use your right hand. So I started doing the right, the right hand of fellowship. I started going in. I had it all down to a T, drop it in there. But somehow it just wasn't the freedom that I had when he deserved everything. It wasn't the freedom that I had when, when I went. I, I didn't go there with a dollar sign. I went there with a free heart. And I just wanted God's kingdom to be, you know, to be furthered. And it just was not free. And so because I didn't look into the scripture to find out that the word of God can set you free when you hear, you hear about the truth, I went for a few years, you know, and started questioning giving. So my wife and I, we, we had this friendly argument. Have you ever had a friend, friendly argument with your wife? Yeah, well, if you did, you're lying. Because it wasn't friendly. But what it was, it was like, it was confrontational. And we had just come off this conference, and it was a good conference. And they talked about finances. And I thought, oh, here we go, honey. Now they're saying you got your, on your gross amount. That's, that's gross. What I, I mean, how can I tie them something that I never get? I'm giving to the government. So my wife and I, she was saying, honey, just, let's just adjust. I said, no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do it this time. And don't you know, because we we're in the car and we still had like two hours to drive that, that the Lord gave us a message on the radio about giving. And I had to repent right then and there. But when I heard what God's view was on it, when I heard what his desire was, it, it wasn't hard for me to make the adjustment. It was just your, you know, and back then you gotta understand, I never questioned when they took over 30% out of my paycheck and just, just gone, you know. I mean, now I find out they, they even use it to save wells. I, I just wouldn't do that. But the money that we give, the finance that we give is to save souls. It's for one more. It's not to build buildings. We had that building over there. We had that room over there made up. Why? Because we would strive to do that. But we want people to be saved and delivered. Listen, Lakeland is my home. I might visit a lot of places, but Lakeland is my home as long as God is, is home. I mean, I'm sorry. That's the way it works. So this morning, my testimony is don't, don't get bound up by how you give. If you have a question, just go to God's word. It will answer every question you have. And then be free to give. Free to worship. See, I love the freedom to dance. I'm sorry if I couldn't come here if you wouldn't let me dance because that's one of the freedoms that I have. Now, I try not to hit anyone, so when you see me spinning, I see you, but you don't come there because I'm, I'm right there. That's my territory. And I'm going to spin. Yeah. And when, when you get 
got 64 and you can spend, then you do what you want to do. But 64 year old selling your spend. I don't get that often anymore. And when I get it, I, I cherish it because it's a freedom, just like giving. So I want you to know here at Epic, what we do is we give our time first because it's the first fruit, it's the first off the top of everything God has given us. So I want you to get ready, get your tithe ready, get your offering ready. The first thing that we're going to do is come forward and give our tithe. Tithe right now. Come on down. Father, as this offering has come before you, you know the hearts of men and women, Lord. You know the freedom that we have. And this morning, we're believing for increase. We believe that this is just the down payment for living on planet Earth. But we know that you can give the increase, Lord, because you're a God that gives increase. Increase this offering. Bless your people to become more and more fruitful in their giving and more and more fruitful in their receiving. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said? Amen. Yeah, you say amen or oh me. Praise God. Yippee skippy. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Oh. Yep. Got you, boss. I need to say something. Um, this church has been so good to me. I've been going here for four years, and I've been through a lot of things. This church has helped me bring out my acting skills. <laughs> Thank you. And, um, <laughs> okay. I've been looking at this podium for four years, and it's the same podium every Sunday. So I decided that it's time for a new one. I spent the last two weeks working on this. It's my gift to the church. Wow. Thank you, man. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I like it. It's it's perfect for Pastor Shirley, isn't it? <laughs> Just whatever you do, please don't put that podium in the warehouse, okay? The old one cannot go in the warehouse. Please don't put anything else in the warehouse for storage. Bill will get upset. I, it's, all, it's all because of Bill. <laughs> Today I want to talk about my God is a consuming fire. My God, the consuming fire. We hear that often. There's songs sung about it. And uh, it's just been so interesting reading in the book of Hebrews where we find that and, and getting through to chapter 12 after we get through 11, which is the faith chapter, reading all about faith and in, 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 giving our definition of faith and increasing in our faith and understanding that our salvation is through faith and that everything that we do as a Christian 
is through our faith in him. And then moving on then into chapter 12 about understanding how to hear God's word and understanding the importance of what it is that he speaks. And here we finish the chapter off in Hebrews 12 uh, verses 28 and 29. It says, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. Now it talks about how that we the the unshakable things are the things that will remain that are a part of the kingdom, meaning that there is a a fire and a shaking coming. You've heard me say this over and over again. I believe this is true. I believe it is very soon. I believe that God is beginning to shake the hearts and minds of his people prior to the main shaking that will shake every unshakable thing off of people. God is preparing his people people to be unshakable in the time of the global shaking when it when it takes place because he wants us to already have shaken off and consumed all of the things that are consumable and shakable so that we are prepared for when he shakes everything and people will look at us and go why are we not shaking and they are and we can say let me tell you how to be able to do that. And so I really believe God is very soon, if not already begun it in some of your lives. I know that he has brought me through quite a bit of shaking in my own life and continues to do so to shake off the unshakable, uh, shake off the shakable things and consume the consumable things so that all that remains are the things of the kingdom which are unshakable and unconsumable in every way so that everything has been refined by fire in that sense. So God is now telling us that he is a consuming fire and that things that will remain are the unshakable things and the unconsumable things that he's going to move through us. And so in reading through here and reading through Hebrews, I had this great revelation that God is the consumer and we are the place that he comes and consumes. We're the, we're the store owner. I used to think that we're the consumers. We get to come to church, and we get to me, me, me. God, I want this. God, I need that. God, what can I get from you today within the four walls of your church? How can I be uplifted? How can I get peace? How can I get strength? How can I get healing? How can I be lifted up in worship? How can I get better? How can I get stronger? How can I be encouraged anymore? I've had a really rough week, and I'm coming in here, Lord, so that you can fill Fill me up to overflow once again, thinking I'm the consumer. I get to walk in here and it's all for me. I get to come in and pick what I want and walk through the store of the kingdom. And, and, and it's like, you know, because some of us, when they go to the Slurpee machine, we don't like just one flavor. Some of them have like 11 flavors. And we'll just mix and match it all around to get that perfect mix of flavors. And we just kind of, I want a little bit of that. And we go through a couple of aisles and we pick a couple of snacks here that we know we like. And pick some of this and maybe some ice cream. And then we go to the cooler and we pick out a Coke or our favorite beverage. And then we walk out of there and we pay for it with our... Our prayer and our reading of the scriptures and our penance for whatever guilty guilt we feel or maybe we throw a couple dollars in the offering because we really sinned over and above that week or something like that you know to just kind of tip the Lord for what he's done and and for the ability to walk through the store and we and we follow the five factors of of uh, of, of consumership when we go into the store of what store we go into we make sure that it has variety we make sure that the location is good? Is it close to us or is it centrally located around where I need to go? And does it, does it have everything that I need there? And of course, price, making sure that the price is just right and understanding all of these things of going through of what's going to fit for me. And I'm that person. I'm like, man, I love coming to church because I, I can be full, filled to overflowing. I want to just burst with the presence of God. And if I'm down and out, I can come into the corporate anointing and just be uplifted and walk out of here feeling good. And then I realized that it was all about God. It really is. How can I minister to you today, God? How can I come in 
and really let it be all about you. It's the difference of, of what a lot of things that I see now and what was like that, that first church and what was like the church at Antioch and the church at Jerusalem. Some of the key components that get, gives us like 10 attributes of the church of Jerusalem and the church at Antioch and what made it so successful and what made it so powerful. One of those important compelling components was that they ministered to God. That they didn't come to get ministered to But they ministered to God. How do I minister to God? How do I? He ministers to me. How could I possibly minister to him? So I started reading and started researching and trying to figure out what can I do? Well, it first starts by asking. God, what can I do? Basically, the very basic first ask is, Jesus, will you come into my heart? And will you forgive me of my sins? And will you be my Lord and Savior forever so that I can live for you forever? So that I can rule and reign with you one day in eternity? That's the first ask. We have to start there, of course, to even get the store open, right? That's our permit, right? We have to go down. Before we can open our store, before we can do anything for anybody else and offer anything to the king, we have to go down to the permit office and get the permit. Well, that permit is salvation. You know, we've been fully inspected, and Jesus said, okay, by the confession of your mouth, I'm going to come into your heart and cleanse your heart, cleanse you from all unrighteousness, you're going to be a blood-bought Christian at that point, And your eternity is secure. And we start by asking. It says here in Romans 10, 9. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. And believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth. Confession is made unto salvation, which leads me to the very next thing of understanding that God is the consumer. Once we confess with our mouth, we ask, then we must believe in our hearts because we're going to ask what we believe. If we don't believe it, we're not going to ask. We ask who we believe. And so we've got to start with who are we going to believe? Because we believe, you know, Pastor Stanley believed his friends. <laughs> you got to have money for the rest of the week. You got to have money for donuts and coffee. You know, that's important. You got to be able to go out with your friends afterwards and have a little bit of front, fun and all of that stuff. But did, when he asked the Lord, the Lord says, give whatever you got to give. And I'll make sure your left pocket's always full. I'll give seed to the sower. You don't have to worry about that. You just do what I tell you to do and everything else will be taken care of. I'll make sure of that. How do we minister to God? We have to begin to ask Him. And it occurs to me that the people we're asking are the ones that we're really ministering to. We minister to the ones we've asked of. If we ask of the Lord, we're beginning to minister to Him because we believe that what He tells us is true. If we ask other people, we believe what they're telling us is the truth. And because of that, we act on that, we believe what they say, and we begin to minister to them out of our obedience to what they say. I begin to minister to the Lord by being obedient to what he says, to the questions that I ask him, because I believe that he's the source of everything that's in my store. He's where I buy my stock from. Now, so many times when, uh, you know, our business owners, they open up a store and they have many different suppliers from many different ways, just depending on keeping the cost down and making sure that everything's right. But he's our source. He's the one that fills our store up with everything that we need. Now, we go around and we ask things and we start using different suppliers that don't require as much out of us. We don't like things being required out of us. We don't like to be required to pray. We don't like being required to attend church. It's in the prohibition that we don't like it. We'll love doing something until we're made to do something. Oh, no. No, no. This is my choice. I I get to say whether I do that. And and we know that because there were probably a million yeses. 
a million okays, a million goods and a million rights and one wrong. Don't eat of this tree. I mean, out of all the yeses, could you imagine a world where there was really only one sin and it was not to eat of a tree? I would have built a house on the other side of the garden and gotten as far, of course, hindsight, you know, and understanding what it caused and what happened as a result of that. But I've been like, man, I'd have built a fence and a wall around it. I would have tried to catch it on fire and get rid of it. Go away from me. One sin. Man, we've got sin every day all the time. Our mouths, our minds, our hearts. We want to do this. Our hearts are filled with aggression. We want to talk back. We want to re be rebellious. We don't want to do what God tells us to do. We don't want to do all these things that we feel that are, are part of our righteousness and that part of, of presenting ourselves a living sacrifice unto God. We don't want to pray. We don't. They didn't even have to do that. They didn't have a Bible to read. They just walked around with God. What's up? Good morning, God. Let's walk in the garden today. Let's just walk. There's no Bible to read. There's no imaginary thing. No, I, I don't have to pray. There's no healing or despair or depression or any of those things. There was just one sin. So... Because of that, we want to participate and use all of these different suppliers because they cost less. And because of that, the quality, quality diminishes. And I read these books all the time, like Multiple Streams of Income and uh, Effective Habits, uh, uh, Habits of Highly Effective People and, you know, uh, the One Minute Millionaire and the Accidental Billionaire and things like that to try to understand the mind of, of people who are financially secure and stable and, and understanding them and try to think like their minds and get them. And it said that the, it, one of the short stories in one of those books was talking about a store owner. There were two store owners in a town, and uh, people from the neighborhood would come into this, this store and say, hey, do you have this? He's like, no, I'm sorry, we don't sell that here. And they left and, of course, never came back. But then there was another store owner that they would go in there, and they uh, said, uh, do you have this? Well, not yet, but it's on order. And meaning that they were going to order it right then and make sure that it was available for the next customer and that customer. But we can have it here overnighted or we can have that within the next couple of weeks. And he began to make a list. And as a result of that list, he began to change the inventory of his store to appeal to his clients and customers that were in the city that he was at. And because it was not about what he thought he needed in that store, but it was about what the consumer wanted in the store. And now understanding that our God is the consumer, we got to begin to change the store inventory and the store stock based on what his needs are for us. And yet... Him being the consumer, he's also the supplier. Isn't that just great that it all comes from one location? He comes into the store and says, you need this, you need this. Do you? Oh, by the way, do you have this in here? Oh, you're probably going to want to get that. And when I worked at Publix, I tell you what, there were two things that I really hated. Number one is inventory. My God, we went through and spent hours scanning every single thing in that store. Everywhere. We had labels everywhere, pallets everywhere, all kinds. And there was a bunch of us everywhere. And it was at night because we had to do it when the store was closed. And we just had to make sure that everything was there. And we had to check everything off. And there was always some stupid thing like pine nuts that we couldn't find. It said five on the list, and we could only find three. And they would make us scour that entire stupid store to find pine nuts. I'm like, here's two dollars. <laughs> Market, I, I bought them, you know. <laughs> Let it go. All right, 
you know, <laughs> you're spending hours of labor for pine nuts, you know, a couple dollars in pine nuts. But, man, we would scour that. And the other thing that I hated was when that we had to redo the entire store because the statisticians have come in with all of their theories to say that shoppers tend to buy more things when what they want is located to the ne next to the items that they need to make what they want taste better. <laughs> so we had to rearrange the entire store. I mean, we emptied every shelf and moved everything around in that entire store so that consumers would buy more stuff. Would, are we willing to do that for him? Are we willing to shut down the store, stock up on the items that he's asking us to put in our store so that when he comes in the store, everything that he wants and needs that ministers to him, that is important to him, will be filled up on every single shelf? Are we willing to take inventory that the master has given us and check off the items and if we're short a few, start praying from him to fill that stock up in our lives if we're low on mercy then we start praying for mercy <laughs> you know what I'm saying <laughs> we begin to fill up and then because we want to make it convenient for the most high God we're willing to rearrange the store however many times he wants us to rearrange it so that it's so convenient for him to walk in and out of our lives and our hearts and our minds that he can minister to us in every way and see where we need to move and shift and shake and ready for the level of obedience that he's called us to to release the level of power that he needs us to have in this earth to excite revival all over this place and change a nation and change a world. Yeah. Hallelujah. I am preaching way better than you're clapping. <laughs> Are y'all tired from the party last night? My goodness. <laughs> And so, as I begin to research the stock that we need to have and that the Master is calling for, I find myself in Philippians chapter 4 and starting in verse 8. Finally, I love that. <laughs> Brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, Whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do. And the God of peace will be with you. If we want God in our store, the God of peace to be with us, then we're going to begin to think and take new inventory in our minds and begin to think on these things that are pure and lovely and good report and noble. We will begin to change out our stock from what the world tells us we should have into what God tells us we should have. As our chief supplier, it says, my God will supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory. He he does not ever run out of stock. This world does. It will fall short every single time. At the most critical moment, the most high pressure moment in your life, it will all of a sudden begin to crumble and fall around you. The plans, it says there is a way that seems right unto man, but the end thereof is death. But... You will let God be your supplier and begin to change and begin to meditate and begin to take inventory and begin to lift up those things that God tells you should be in your store and get rid of the things that should not be in your store. He will then dwell in you. The God of peace will be with you in your store and you will be able to minister to him effectively and through the obedience that he has called you to. Next, we find ourselves in Galatians chapter five and the lovely verse 22 that I just find so amazing that again as a rebellious youth I had to write a number of times 
like, I think it was like five times I had to write this um, per night uh, for like a month. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> I just didn't have the right inventory, and Mama was going to make sure I had the right inventory. <laughs> Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. This is the produce section, by the way. <laughs> is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, <laughs> kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And I'm telling you, as a left-handed writer, it just took me a long time to write that. I tried to write that and skim through that as fast as I could. I even tried that old method where you write the first word every time, but, 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 the, 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 yeah. And it still just took forever to get through all of the fruit of the Spirit in the produce section of our heart that God is calling us to. But I am telling you that God is calling us to be, and He is our consumer. We are not the consumers. He is the consumer. We're the ones, we're the vessels that are opened up to Him to have whatever He wants inside of us. And don't get upset because this one, this store over here has this brand of whatever, and this store over here has this brand over here, and this por person over here has an extra portion of this, and this person over here has an extra person because he has different stores for different needs. If everybody, if there was only McDonald's, we would be upset. But we've got McDonald's and KFC and Burger King and Arby's and Checkers and Steak and Shake and Chick-fil-A closed on Sundays and all of these different things. It's my pleasure. So we've got all of these different things available to us because God knows about what he created us to be, which is a why in the garden there was a million yeses and only one no because he wants us to enjoy this earth he wants us to take joy in his creation he created a great and perfect thing when he created you and when he created this world and so don't get upset about what's in whose store but make sure that your inventory is squared away so that when God the consumer comes into your store he'll find everything in order and everything in stock that it should be and you'll be ready to hold up the manifest that says, this is what I've got in my store, this is what I checked off, and this is what I need more of. We find ourselves in a place to where we can now minister to God by what is in our heart and what we confess with our mouth and what we believe in our hearts and minds. When we can begin to make the transition that we are not here for ourselves, but we are here to minister to God in every facet and aspect of our life. That includes church, that includes our workplace, that includes our home, that includes every place that God has called us to go. Everywhere we are, God called us to be there. And when we have the inventory that we need, then we can minister to God by ministering to the people that he allows to come into contact with us through the paths that he has called us on. Amen. Amen. Stand to your feet today. Hallelujah. So, Father, right now, we just minister to you. Father, we ask right now, we just take a holy inventory of our hearts and minds right now, and we begin to ask of you the source of all of our supplies and all of our needs, and we begin to look at what is in our heart and see if it is welcoming to you, because we want the God of peace to dwell within us and with us everywhere we go. We don't want you to leave. We want stuff in our store, stuff in our vessel that is going to keep you with us, that our prayer would be that of Moses, that I'm not going to go unless you're with me, realizing that the only way he's going to be with us is if we're willing to transfer our stock into kingdom stock and have kingdom supplies in our vessel that is righteous and holy and acceptable to the King of Kings to dwell within us and dwell through us, that we are able to minister to Him and that we would get rid of all consumable things, Lord, that the consuming fire would not find any place in our heart and not take anything away because we have the unshakable, unconsuming items in our heart as our inventory. Father, right now, let us begin to move through our hearts and minds with the Holy Spirit's guidance and begin to change our store to make it most appealing to minister to the chief consumer of all things, you God.
Touch our hearts and touch our minds right now. Let a strength grow up inside of us right now as we prepare for the shaking of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And let us be ready and let us be found righteous. Let us be found on the side of righteousness, God. When you begin to do your holy inventory inside of us, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity that we have to minister to you through our obedience, Lord. Let us not be afraid to ask of you anything that we're lacking in our store. Father, if we lack in any of the fruit of the Spirit and we lack anything in our produce section of our heart, Lord, let us begin to cry out to you for it, God, because you are the one who supplies it. Father, if we are lacking any good thing that we think we need, let us begin to cry out to him to increase our capacity to hold everything that you have called for us to have in our vessels, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give us the strength to get rid of those things that we've held on to for too long. Let us get rid of the stock that keeps you away. Let us get rid of those things that are anti-God in our life. Hallelujah. 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 God, you are good. You are holy. You are righteous. Father, let us be obedient to you in everything that we say and do. Let us begin to think on the things of the word and live by the fruit of the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. Now at Epic Church, we believe that God can heal all things, that God can deliver all things, that God can change your hearts and minds, and and through the power of agreement, through the power of prayer, that God can change anything in your life. And right now, we want to open up this area up front. Our ministry elders are available. Our prayer ministry team is available to pray with you and agree with you. If you need healing in your body, salvation, baptism in the Holy Spirit, if you just need strength to go through and start doing and some inventory in your life and begin to transition from who you're asking to who you need to be asking. We want to pray that prayer of agreement with you. So this uh, uh, area is available to you and we will pray that prayer of agreement. Amen. God bless you guys. Go out and change somebody's life this week. Hallelujah.